you know, this has been a great place to work. People are made for a certain purpose, and I think this is what I'm made for. I thank God that uh, I was blessed knowing Dr. Greenberg and Dr. Dr. Rich. I was um, struggling with a problem with my throat, and I had myself convinced I had cancer and met with Dr. Drew Ridge, who was chief of head and neck surgery. He looked at me and he said, you have reflux. I said, well, you know, sigh of relief, and I said, wow. Apologized for taking his time. And he surprised me by saying, you know, you came here for a reason. I said, yeah, I came here for my throat. He said, look, let's, let's just talk about your medical history. I said, well, the only thing I've ever had was, was a, a kidney stone, and that was removed about seven years ago. And um, he said, were there any other problems there? I said, no, I didn't have any follow-up or anything. So he said, let me go talk to Dr. Greenberg, the head of urology. He did a complete workup uh, like he does on everybody, and found that he had microscopic hematuria. And that's blood that you don't see in the urine, but uh, blood that uh, under the microscope is apparent and that's an indication to be evaluated. I thought it was important. He came with one problem, we found another, but we should pursue it and take care of it. I was stage three with no symptoms. Mr. Delapena's tumor was about this big because of where it was located in the back of, of, the, of the chest cavity underneath the ribs. He couldn't feel it and had no symptoms. If Dr. Greenberg hadn't spent the time, if Dr. Ridge hadn't said, he came here for a reason, spent a little more time with me, and he was a very busy man. I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't have seen my seven grandchildren being born. He's a poster boy for bad cancer and good outcomes and uh, being in the right place at the right time. Operations to rebuild the jaw used to take uh, 18 to 24 hours. Now we commonly complete these operations in less than eight hours with better function. Now, uh, unless the kidney tumor is just so big that it's not feasible, uh, we always attempt to, uh, to do a partial nephrectomy and save some of the kidney function. But we're keeping people alive for years instead of months. And hopefully with new combinations and newer targeted therapies, we may get a cure yet. They really have a mission in their life. It's not just to take care of that patient that they're dealing with that day. There's something further out there that they're grasping for. I've known Richard as long as I've been at Fox Chase. He's one of the few people at the institution who's been here longer than I have. Uh, and uh, he's always been a happy warrior. You know, we're engaged in a struggle with cancer. How would you describe Drew? Drew's tall and skinny. Uh, Drew, I think, is uh, much more serious. But again, he, he deals with the head and neck cancers, so he has a different, has to have a different perspective. Preventing trouble eating and trouble breathing and trouble speaking and making it possible for people to live a normal life in the face of the disease does them a tremendous service uh, and it's immensely satisfying professionally. These two doctors have saved many, many lives. They, they work incalculable hours. The sad thing is I'm totally useless at doing anything else. I have no other talents. Uh, I don't know, I can't play music, I can't draw, I have good hands and good judgment uh, doing things that uh, other people would find very unpalatable, which is good because then I get to do them. I was really involved in Fox Chase, I mean, to a point where I was probably attending 25 meetings a year. Then you say, what more can I do to help? 
Institutional Advancement decided to honor me with the uh, Laurel Society Award. It was a very special evening, full house. People really engaged in what Fox Chase was doing. And I said to my wife, I said, Carol, look, this, this could be some fun. Why don't we surprise them and do an endowed share for each of them? Carol said, absolutely, perfect. I said, you know, you surprised me when you found my cancer. Now I'm going to surprise you. I don't get blindsided very often. I'm pretty intuitive about a lot of things, but uh, Lou uh, shocked my socks off. When I worked with Mr. Del Payne in the office, that was a one-on-one -on -one interaction. And so it's an entirely different kind of personal uh, reflection of what I was able to do for him. And I appreciate that for Mr. Delapana. Not simply from him and from his family, but in the name of all the patients. The, the whole thing about this is identifying and recognizing special people at Fox Chase and what they've done for others. They literally saved my life. And it's something that I can never thank them enough for. It.